Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we are working on a 2013 Chevy Impala. Uh, it's got the 3.6 liter V6 direct injected engine. And the customer complaint is the check engine light came on and uh, he already pulled a code. It has something to do with fuel pressure. So let's scan it. I got the launch already booted up. <coughs> the car is running. We're in the fuel pump control module. There we go. And it says, uh, I'm sorry, we're in the ECM, the engine control module. And the code in here is fuel pump control module requested mill illumination. So we have to back out of here and go into the fuel pump control module. So, see, they both have faults. <clears throat> and the fuel pump module should give us a more specific code. Okay, here we go. P018C fuel pressure sensor circuit low voltage. All right, um, that's a great direction. So let's look up some information, do a little research on this fuel pressure sensor, and see what our next test is. Actually, while we are still in the FPCM menu, let's take a look at the, the data and see what our fuel pressure reads. So we'll select all these, click OK. Okay, there's ignition voltage, that's good. Desired fuel pressure. Hmm, it says 43. Fuel pressure sensor is 43. Interesting. That's and that's all we have here. So right now, actually, the check engine light is not on. Uh, seems to be that the system is working normally. Now, I guess to actually find the fault, we're we're either going to have to drive the car until it happens, or maybe you know do a couple wiggle checks on the harness or the sensor itself and see if we can recreate this fault because right now it looks like the system is working normally and that's why our check engine light is off at the moment. So I just spoke to the owner of the vehicle and uh, getting a little more history on the on this code he said that he was getting ready to do an induction cleaning service under the hood and he said he moved some harnesses around and uh, after that uh, the code popped up uh, as he was starting the engine, I guess, for the service. So let's go under the hood. He'll show us what harnesses he moved in. We might find the problem there. All right, so. Dispatch. So you said you had to move some harnesses out of the way? Right. Um, so this down here, you pulled the connector off that. That just holds that bracket of harnesses in. Okay. this up like this okay. uh -huh. because I pulled the front of the air box up yep. and set it up and then I plugged the MAF in back up it'll be sitting like this and I'll plug it in okay. like this. Okay. Uh -huh. So I thought maybe one of the wires uh, in here got stretched. So you're saying the only thing you actually unplugged was the mass airflow right. but then you plugged it back in and then you started it up. Then I started it up. Right. And then it set the check engine light. Right. Yep. Okay, and maybe so, one of the wires in here got stretched um, or something. It's possible so maybe we'll do a little you know turn the key on We'll set the scanner right here and we'll, you know, try to recreate it. You'll show me what you did and I'll look at the data okay. and see if we can find the problem. Alright, well here's the data stream. The owner's gonna do what he did and we'll see if this data pit drops low. So, so you're just, whoop. That's just the bracket. Oh, okay. So you're pulling up on, on those guys right there. That's what I did. Okay. And our, let's see, let's plot desired fuel pump command. There we go, fuel pressure. So right now it's at around 61. And there's our fuel pressure sensor voltage. So I'm gonna 
try to wiggle the harnesses here and we'll keep looking at that graph. So let's see, we have some bulk connectors up here. We might have to look at a wiring diagram to pinpoint exactly which wire it is. Uh, I see some electrical tape on there. Is that... That's from either from? Stalkers did that or came from factory. Huh. I mean, it definitely doesn't look stock. Stalkers did some <laughs> transmission work on the uh, transmission. Oh, uh, okay, okay. There. Oh, there you go. Oh, drop so out. So I just moved something and it dropped out. And it was... I just pulled up on this harness right here. Let's keep looking. There it is again. Okay, we're close. There it is. Up. And there it is. Right there. So I'm just barely touching this this connector right here with all the tape over it. So I think we're on the right track. There I can make it drop all the way down and hold it there once I release pressure in that connector. There it comes right back. So I think we're gonna have to take that tape off and see what we can find in the harness. Alright, so we can recreate this dropout. So that code is accurate. It is a low, you know, low voltage code. Now, there, see, I mean, I'm just moving this whole harness assembly. Um, but, you know, visually, it's not, it doesn't look like it's rubbing on any brackets in there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is first figure out is this a short to ground? Or is it an open in that wire? That's number one. Um, to do that, we need to find the right wire that we're affecting for this fuel pressure sensor. And then, um, you know, find that wire, use a test light maybe to check for a short to ground, and go from there. So I did do a little homework and printed out the wiring diagram for the fuel pump control module. And here's our fuel pressure sensor and it does go through several connectors and this X115 the uh, one means it's you know up front and we're looking for let's see here 5 volt reference so that could be dropping out or the signal wire could be either being you know shorted to ground or uh, just an open somewhere so at this connector A, B and C at X115 we're looking for the brown wire is a 5 volt reference, purple wire is our signal, and gray wire is our return. And they should be in line. A, B, C, brown, purple, and gray. So let's see if we can find that. Brown, purple, and gray. Okay, that, that might be it right there. A, B, C, brown, purple, and gray. So let's get a voltmeter out and a test light and do some checks right at this connector and see if the voltage actually corresponds to our scan data when we pull on this harness. Okay, so we are on the brown wire. That's this guy right here at X115. That should be a steady 5 volt reference. Now as we wiggle this harness and watch our scan data, we'll also watch the voltmeter. Now let's set this up. Set this up together. Let's see. Let's see, there's five volts there. I'll set this guy up right here. So we'll be able to see both the voltmeter and our dropouts. So I'm going to try to reproduce this fault. Boom. So let's try to make it stick. Stick low. Come on. So our five volt reference is staying at five.
There you go. Five volt reference is rock solid and we're still missing the signal. So that is not our problem. Let's move on to our purple wire. This guy right here. So we're at 3.7 volts. Just like our scan data says. Now again, I'm gonna try to recreate the dropout. And sure enough, there it is, zero, and we're at 140 millivolts. So that is accurate. Uh, finally, I guess we can check the ground. But um, let's see, would, would a bad ground cause this problem potentially? If we lost the ground here, we should actually jump up to five volts. So I'm not worried about the ground. Let's not waste time on that. Uh, now I want to see if this is an open wire or or is that short to ground. Now, let's see, the way this harness is laid out, the signal is actually coming from the fuel pressure sensor up to the fuel pump control module. Now this thing, uh, I looked up the location, it lives in the trunk. And our fuel pressure sensor I think is by the fuel tank. So <laughs> right now we don't really know uh, which you know which way are we going here. Is this coming from the sensor or is that coming from the fuel pump control module? That's what I would like to know. But we can still plug in a test light from battery positive and see during our dropout if uh, it pulls our test light to ground and lights it up. All right, so our test light from battery positive is connected straight to the signal wire. Are we going to damage the computer with this? Not a chance. Our test light is obviously off, and look at our voltages. They're pegged high, you know, as high as the scanner can show. So, you know, whatever, five, almost five volts there. Uh, and the scale shifted. That's kind of a shame, but we're going to try to make this thing drop out. See if our test light lights up. There it is. There it is. Bam. Test light is lit and our voltage is at zero. So this is indeed a short to ground somewhere. And let it go. That is a beautiful test with the test light. So it's not a broken wire. It's actually shorting on some kind of a direct path to ground. That's cool. And with our uh, with our amp clamp, we can actually find the direction of current and uh, track it down. <clears throat> so, the owner tells me that it did have some kind of transmission work done. Either the transmission control module was replaced. That explains all this tape here. So I wouldn't be surprised if that harness is not clipped back into its OEM location. And uh, we just have to find where it's rubbing on, on some sort of bracket. So now, we've got the scanner out of here. The key is off. All we need to do now, the test light is still connected to battery positive. Try to recreate this fault and make this test light light up like that. And then see our current meter is showing, you know, about a quarter of an amp. It's not really important the exact number, but just the fact that it shows current when the test light is lit. So we know the current is traveling through the test light to that pin down that harness down to the transmission somewhere. So that's going to be the fun part is finding exactly where that current is going. Alright, so we've got the car jacked up safely on a jack stand. There it is. And I have a little beefier test light set up hooked up. Uh, this will just draw one amp. And as you can see, when we uh, wiggle the harness right here, Let's see here. This light bulb should if I do it just right, there it is. It should light up. There it is, come on, come on. Bam. So that's short to ground active. I let go of the harness, not active. So let's come down here where we have better access to this harness. Uh, let's see. 
I see you. There's the, there's the harness. Here's our test light. So that guy, set this up on the brake line here. The bulb should light up as uh, you recreate this short to ground. So I'm, I'm almost suspecting it's rubbing right here on the transmission somewhere. There it is. Okay. I actually want to see what I'm doing myself. Alright guys, so that spot did indeed look suspicious, and if I press this harness against the transmission just the right way, our light, let's see here, now that you disturbed it, you know, come on, <laughs> there it is, come on short to ground. But anyways, here is our fuel rail pressure sensor. It's actually up up here on the fuel rail. It's a nice spot for it. Right by the wheel. There's our harness. Right here. Comes up here and ties into this main harness right at the spot where it's rubbing on the transmission. And that is indeed our problem. If we peel back this tape, you can see the purple wire. This is the money shot right here. Let's uh, try to get some lighting on there. Try to zoom in a little bit. All right. Can you see the uh, that wire right there? There's purple. And what was our signal wire again? It was purple, wasn't it? Yeah. There it is. You can see the purple wire. It's bare. It was rubbing on the transmission like that. ever so slightly. Let's peel that back. We're going to need to repair this. You can see bare copper. Copper strands. Focus. There it is. Right there. So, I guess it, there it is. You can see a little, little spark in our... There it is. There's our light. There's our short to ground. Confirmed. So let's fix that up and should get this car back on the road. Alright, let's take a look at the repair. So I just taped up the wire that was rubbed through and taped everything up, the conduit, and then zip tied it to one of the heater hoses up there so it's not resting on the transmission case anymore. So that should keep it from rubbing through long term. So let's uh Fire it up, clear the codes, put this uh, air cleaner back on here, and make sure uh, make sure we're all we're all good. All right, final confirmation of repair. Let's back out of here, clear that code. Key on GTCs. So we had low voltage, high voltage from our uh, testing with the um, test light. So let's clear these out. Yep. Sweet. Make sure we have nothing there. Awesome. So it looks like we're going to get away with not replacing any parts, no modules, no sensors. That's always a good thing. Let's go back into our engine controller, make sure that code is gone.
No trouble coat system normal. Sweet. So let's just go back to our fuel pump control module. Start up the start up the car. Sounds like uh, the battery is getting a little weak. And we should have a good reading from our fuel pressure sensor. There we go. Desired pressure is 57. Real pressure is right around where it should be. Now it's 43, 43. Awesome. I like it. Alright, so that's it for this one. So don't be uh don't be in a hurry to throw any parts at it for a, a certain code like in this case. I'm sure a shop would have just thrown a fuel rail pressure sensor at it and wouldn't have fixed it. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.